the five bay of her mind.
My reading is taken from a letter that Paul has written to the people of Corinthians, chapter 15, and that's what they have picked for the reading today. The gift of love. If I speak in tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging symbol. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all the mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I, I may post, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It's, it is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoice in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, holds all things and tools of things. Love never ends. To sum up that in tongue or offer of time. Offer we got anger here guy. Tell the message of God. 
It was given to us. Yeah? Fine. Or with all those that have knowledge, all those that has that can solve <coughs> mysteries, and all those that knows the things that, that you and I does not know, they boast about these things. And then he comes up with a recipe that if you do not have love, you're just a noisy symbol. And when, when you go to, to a nightclub, and when the band, the live band plays, and the drummer, when he hits the drums, it's beautiful noise. But every now and again, he smashes the cymbal, and it makes such a, such a noise that it, you, you cannot, uh, you have to notice that, the difference of that noise. Because it is like all empty cans that has been put together just to make that, that note when he hits it. Everybody has to see. And it's just like for those that, that when you are in a family, there has to be one that loves to speak and to hear his voice. All help is within the family. And this is what this letter is about. It's about you calming yourself down. Because there will be a day when she come home and, and it does not work whether she slam the door or come late and all those things. And whatever she says to you, your face will be funny. There seems to be a little bit of uh, tout in there and then it comes out bursting. You pick this, and I'm just trying to explain it. Because when we become a couple, the word or the recipe for this is love. Without love, whether you are angry and whether you are hungry and whether things does not fall your way, normally, Face are being changed. And I encourage you to, as you begin your journey this, today, this is not the end of the courtship. This is not, yes, I hear it, now you do this and do this. No, this is the beginning of your courtship, the one that you started three years ago. And when it comes to times like this, like as of today, you learn to know each other. You learn to know her women. When her Jesus face, face changed, you should be able to tell. Those are the mysteries that you need as you journey together to know each other. So when her face changed this way or her eyebrows goes high, you be careful because then comes the onslaught after. But it's the same way. You learned his, his symbol. Oh, he needs some food on the table and maybe a TV on the wall. Hey, get him out to take you out just like he's doing now. To get to this point, there's no, no need to, to pray. A habit that has got you together. But it is and, and something that has been missing in a lot of families. The Spirit of God is always there waiting with open arms to accept those, to accept those that are willing to come to Him. Love never ends. See, a lot of families, they begin with love never ends. After a few months, they start looking at something that walks down the road and you start looking start this way instead of that way, where, where your, your wife is. I'm not, I'm not putting you down, I'm just telling you what it is. I have a few slap on my face every now and again just to remind me that this, hey, I am the wife, not her. Sometimes I joke about this thing. But this is the reality. 
when statistics comes out, there are more uh, divorce than wedding as of now. My wedding, I want to go through all this with you now so that I don't have to come and visit you to try and calm you down, guys there. Continue courtship. Continue being honest with one another. Continue <coughs> to work hard on love. Love is not something that you just keep saying. It is true in your action, it's true in the things that you the little things that you do. Sometimes when we come home from work after a long hard day, all we need is a little bit of peace. And that peace comes with us, with a voice that says, Hi darling, I missed you today. Man, all of a sudden. I have all the power in the world, I don't know where that comes from. But these are the secrets of love. And when you guys can do that, other people will see what's different with this time. It's because they have love. Love that never ends. Love that is not just hot air. Love that does not end just by saying it, but through working together. Be a partner. Everything you do, it's a partnership. Here and there, the pains that you feel should be felt by your wife. The pains you feel should be felt by her. Sometimes you need to do the grind for you. And it's the other way around. See, I can talk about this subject because I, I do a lot of talking trying to get people to, to reignite their promise on this day. And for those of you that are sitting there looking around this church, I challenge you. Think about the day you get married, the promise that you made, and see whether that will revive you for the last leg of your day. I'm 70 years old. When my wife goes away, for a day or two and then she went to America and stayed for a month. I put on a big smile for the church when I come here, but I mean, do I miss her? See, if I am 70 years old and I'm able to admit to a whole lot of strangers here, I'm quite sure in the beginning of your journey, aim for the long run. And the long run comes from the support that the both families and friends that are here. Not trying to break this young, beautiful couples that I am going to, 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 to encourage to walk the talk of love for the rest of their life. Long journey, long sermon, but this is not a sermon, it's a reflection. Love never ends. Why? Because God is love. And when you sow love in all the things that you do, the Spirit is with you. Amen. I'm going to ask you guys to come up again. And also for the Father to be here for that way in this time.
Your marriage is intended to join you for life. In a relationship so intimate and personal that it will change the whole thing. God offers you the hope and indeed the promise of love that is true and true. You may know that you want to be joined in Christian marriage and no one has shown any valid reason why you may not. If either of you knows of any reason that you want to declare, now is the time. Otherwise, hold your peace forever. You okay?
promised before God, that these witnesses be your faithful, to be your faithful, to share with you in plenty and in what? In joy and in sorrow, in sickness and in health. To forgive, to forgive and strengthen you and to join with you so that together we will serve God. And others as long as we both start it. As long as we both. You may see this.
find delights in each other and grow in holy love until life's end. Amen. So, the people that, that uh, I'm going to sign the register, you see, you make your way through the come around this side. And come through.
I think this, this opportunity and the pleasure of introducing to you Mr. and Mrs. Tuhoroa. Wanna take some pictures here? Oh, yeah. Over there. 